subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. You welcome to the Senior High School Hour on Joy Learning with your facilitator, Boga Sam, to study the salinity of the ocean in Form 2. I believe you've been enjoying our lessons right here on this Joy Learning channel. And so no wonder you keep watching Joy Learning. Just move with me. So the topic is... The salinity of the ocean. In fact, when we talk of salinity, quickly, salt must come to your mind. That is not to say that we are coming to study about how to use salt to cook. No. But then we are coming to look at the salt content and the various oceans. And when we studied oceans the other time, I believe you have not forgotten them. And so having that understanding, you'll be able to understand this one as well. And so what are our objectives? What do I expect you as a learner to get after I am done with this lesson? So objective number one, as to define ocean salinity. When I'm done, finally, I expect you to be able to define ocean salinity. And also start, state the factors influencing ocean salinity. Okay? Then the third objective is to explain the factors influencing ocean salinity. And so you, you state and what explain. Objective number four is to explain the latitudinal distribution of ocean salinity. Now, ocean salinity, what is it? Ocean water contains various minerals such as sodium chloride and it comes with a chemical formula capital N, small a, capital C, small l. And I believe you know this already. Okay? Then also we have other minerals such as calcium bicarbonate. Calcium bicarbonate. And with that one too, we have the chemical formula here. We can also talk of magnesium chloride, which comes with capital M, small g, capital C, l2. As the chemical formula. Now, generally, ocean salinity refers to the concentration of salt in seawater or the ocean. It can also be defined as the amount of salt content in the ocean. And so when we talk of ocean salinity, it is about how much salt do we have in the ocean or say in seawater is that okay so the concentration of salt in the ocean that is what ocean salinity means or stands for so moving forward you know on your screen is a sodium chloride and i believe this type of salt is common in your house or say home okay if you are the gentleman who has been visiting the kitchen most of the times of course you see somebody you know unfortunately some of you you don't want to be in the kitchen all you want to see is that your food is ready and set on the table for you and so this is an example of sodium chloride just in case you have not seen some before. Next on the screen is calcium bicarbonate. And when you look at this one, it's like it has small grains 
than the sodium chloride. Good. We also have magnesium chloride. Okay? And this one too, it's, it is, you know, quite different from the first two that we have looked at. And so, magnesium chloride. Okay. Now, salinity varies from place to place in the oceans. In other words, when you take the oceans, the amount of salt in them is not the same throughout. And so, that is to say that the salt content in the Atlantic Ocean it's not the same as that of the Pacific Ocean, nor the Indian Ocean. They are not the same. Is that okay? And so they vary. The salinity varies from place to place in the oceans. But then the relative proportions of the most major dissolved constituents, as in the salt, remain virtually what? Constant. They are not the same. But then, per measurement... We can classify a particular ocean as being salty. Is that okay? Now, it is measured in percentage form or parts. So either in percentages or what? Parts. Parts per thousand. And when we say parts per thousand, what does that mean? Okay? What it means is that we sort of fetch 1,000 grams of ocean water, send it to the lab, okay? And then we test the salt content in that 1,000 grams of water. And so the results will give us, say, 35 parts of that 1,000 grams of water, that uh, ocean water that we sent to the lab for the test. Is that okay? But then, we also have what they call the practical salinity unit, to bracket PSU. And so it was in the 1978 that we had the practical salinity unit as a nest or a new unit apart from the percentage or the parts per thousand and this is a unit based on the properties of sea water conductivity so what this unit does is that it gives us the sea the researchers may use electrodes or say metals to test the conductivity of the ocean water. And we will not go deeper into that because that is not the focus as far as this lesson is concerned. Now, ocean salinity is measured either with conductivity meter. So in other words, some of the instruments used in measuring ocean salinity. We have what we call conductivity meter. Okay, then also hydrometer. Please be careful you don't go and write hygrometer. The moment you change the D to be G, it changes the meaning. Okay, or refractometer. So we have conductivity meter, hydrometer, and average salinity in the global ocean is 35.5 practical salinity unit that is PSU in other words we may say 35.5 parts per thousand grams of ocean water and this varies from less than 15 at the mouth of the rivers and so at the mouth of the rivers you know the rivers are fresh waters okay so if right at the mouth in PSU at the mouth of the rivers to more than 40 PSU in the Red Sea. Is that okay? 
So this gives you a clue about Red Sea when it comes to salinity. And we shall get there. Is that okay? Now, when a cartographer, okay, and a cartographer is the one or the person who makes maps, okay? So if a cartographer wants to communicate to you, the learner, or say the reader, that we have various places where the salinity levels are the same, this cartographer will not come out to communicate to you, just as we studied about contour lines, okay? So, in this case, when it, com that is, when it comes to salinity of the ocean, the cartographer uses the line that we call isohelen. So, an isohelen is a line drawn on a, on a map to show places of equal word salinity. Is that okay? Good. Ocean salinity. In other words, what and what happened that the ocean water is salty? What contributed to that? Is that okay? And so number one, we can talk about temperature and evaporation. Temperature and evaporation is one of the factors, or say the contributing factors. Then the second factor is the amount of fresh water in the sea. So we have amount of fresh, okay. Then the third one is the degree of water mixing by currents. The degree of water mixing by currents. And when we talk of this current, in fact, I'm not talking about electricity current, or probably, as someone may think. I remember, uh, one of the days in my classroom, one of my students was like, I would say, we also have human currents. In other words, human feelings. <laughs> Please, that is not what I've studied already. <laughs> These students, eh? <laughs> They'll make you laugh. All right. So let's take the uh, factors one after the other, then we explain. Okay. So the first one was temperature and evaporation. And how do these uh, two uh, elements of weather affect ocean salinity? All right. So high temperature leads to high rate of evaporation. Evaporation. In other words, there is a positive relationship between temperature and evaporation. And so when temperature is high, it also causes evaporation to be high. So there is a positive relationship. Now, evaporation increases the salinity of seawater. And how does that happen? Because it removes, is that okay, the evaporation? It removes water. And once water rises into the earth, thus increasing their uh, concentration. Okay? Way back, if you have indeed followed me, here on this Joy Learning channel and on our social media handles, when I was teaching you about Oasis, all right, then so because of the a high amount of insulation or say the high amount of sunlight received in the arid regions, sometimes you go to this spot and then you see salt behind. Because so what it means is that when temperature increases, it takes the water away by the process known as what evaporation. Is that okay? So once evaporation takes place, then the salt content in the water then must be left behind because for that one, the, the evaporation couldn't take it along. The evaporation was only able to take the or say remove the water, but not the salt. And so the salt is fixed and around the equator, where the sunlight is really received, they realize that evaporation will take place. In other words, some amount of water will be removed, or will be taken from the, that masses of uh, ocean water. And so what it means is that the salt content will increase, all because some water 
has been taken out and for that matter increasing the salinity level of the ocean now so on the contrary on the contrary salinity is low when temperature is swat low i told you earlier that there is a positive relationship between temperature and evaporation and so once temperature is low then of course we cannot experience higher evaporation and so for that matter we still have the more water okay thereby reducing the salt content so let me give you this uh typical example if you have ever uh, uh, sorry if you have ever taken what uh soakings gary soakings okay and uh sometimes you know the the soakings is in such a way that <laughs> The, the, the gallery is gradually solidifying. The gallery is becoming hard. And already you have added the sugar. And you don't want to take the gallery with the sugar in a solid form. Is that okay? And so you want to take it in the liquid form. And then you add more water to the gallery or say to the soakings to change it from that solid state to a liquid state. When you do that, Without adding additional sugar to it, what will happen is that, in fact, I want you to answer, of course, the sugar content will reduce. And it's like when you take the soakings, it doesn't taste good. Is that okay? That is exactly what happens here. And so the more water we have, the low salt content we have. So when it comes to salt content and then water, the volume of water, there is what uh, 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 there's a negative relationship or say opposite relationship is that okay now uh okay it means we are done with temperature and uh evaporation now the next factor is the amount of fresh water in the sea and earlier i did talk about fresh water and what does that one do fresh water of course reduces the salt content so let's read the material that we have, then we see. The addition of fresh water from melting ice, in other words, the thawing of the ice, okay? Geographically, if you say the ice is melting, you can say the ice is what? Thawing. That is T-H-A-W-I-N-G. Okay, you know it already. Okay? Then rains and running sources. And so... This tells you that some of the sources of the fresh water in the oceans are melting ice, rains, and running waters, okay? And these tend to reduce the salinity of the ocean by diluting its salt content, just as we diluted the sugar in the soakings. And so the more fresh water that we have in the ocean, the salt solution in other words the ocean water made up of salt is being diluted and once it is diluted then of course you can't expect to have the same amount of salt in it now this explains why the saltiest locations in the ocean are the regions where there is little fresh water inflow okay and high evaporation and so the inflow of fresh water in such oceans is what is low okay and moreover the sun also really shines in these areas okay and so as we move ahead we'll get to know some of these places okay still on the amount of fresh water in the sea or say the ocean among the five oceans of the world, the Atlantic Ocean, please take note of this. The Atlantic Ocean is the saltiest, okay? You know, we have the Pacific, the Indian, the Arctic, the Antarctic, okay? And then the Atlantic. And among all these, the five oceans of the world, the most saltiest ocean is the Atlantic Ocean. In other words, it is the Atlantic Ocean that contains high amount of salt or that has high concentration of what? Of salt. In terms of the seas, the Red Sea tops all. When we take the seas, the Red Sea 
tops all with 41 parts of salt per thousand grams of water followed by the mediterranean sea with 38 watt parts is that okay and so what we are trying to say is that when we take the seas the red sea is the most saltiest unfortunately some claim that the dead sea is the most saltiest but the answer is no okay the dead sea is just about 31 32 parts okay but then the red sea ranges from 38 parts to 41 parts and so in my earlier presentation you know uh, i gave you a low salinity level at the mouth uh, of the river to be 15 psu okay but then the highest one being more than 40 psu or say 40 parts and so here we come the red sea ranges from 38 parts to 41 parts and the mediterranean sea being 38 and so once the red sea ranges from 38 to 41 then of course when it comes to the 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 saltiest sea in the world that should be the red sea and so for the dead sea that is around 31 parts is that okay good right and so we have a map here now when we talk of the red sea as a geography fan or say geography learner you must know the location of the red sea and so on your screen is a world map where we have the red sea with a red color of course the name is what red sea and i know definitely you guys will be asking me so does that mean that just over you know the Red Sea is intense green and blue, okay? But then we have some plants in the sea. Is that okay? Or say agi in the sea. And when these agi die off, they give a red color to the sea. And so sometimes the color of the sea is what is red. Or say reddish brown is that okay and so that is how come it bears the name red sea so yes indeed it is true sometimes the color is red or say reddish brown so when we call it red sea it is not out of place and so this is the location of the red sea you can see it here is that okay uh, sharing borders with a uh, uh, say between east africa and that of what saudi arabia is that okay or the asian continent so this is the location of the map that is a google image or a source is online is that okay? or say the internet right how about the mediterranean sea when we talk of the mediterranean sea where can we find it you know just above the red sea and to be specific at the topmost part of north africa that is where we have the mediterranean sea i mean this part is that okay uh -huh. and then from there uh, as you go northwards you go to europe is that okay so that is the location of the mediterranean sea now here we have a map showing areas of high and low salinities okay as far as the oceans are concerned and so we have our south american continent here that of north america we have uh, africa here asia australia and then the other continent which is the arctic okay and then the antarctica now the whole of the the water body there okay between these continents is what we term as the atlantic ocean and don't forget that at the time i did tell you that we have the north and then the south all because of the position of the equator and so the water above the equator is termed as the north atlantic or in other words the ocean above the equator is termed as what north atlantic and that below uh, the equator is termed as south atlantic and so together it is known as what an indication that the amount of salt there is very high and so when you check the south atlantic ocean and that of the north you can see that 
we, uh, the red color is really dominating, telling you that the Atlantic Ocean is the most saltiest ocean of the world, or in the world, as compared to the other oceans. Okay? Now, just a quick one. Let's look at that of the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. You can see that uh, they are more reddish than that of the Atlantic Ocean that we even claim. That is the most sorteous. So this is also an indication that the Red Sea and then the Mediterranean Sea are very salty. But of course, it's the Red Sea that tops all. Good. So it means we are done with the amount of fresh water. Of course, the map that I showed you, if we should have more, I mean, source of uh, fresh water, then of course the salt content will reduce. And so let's come to the next contributing factor. Also, the next reason why the ocean water is saline, or in other words, the ocean water is salty. So we have the degree of water mixing by current. And as I told you, this current has uh, have to do with the word ocean current and not any other current. And so ocean current, which carry, carry seawater from one place to another, combined with the free mixing of ocean water to affect its salinity. Okay? We have already learned about ocean current to be the uh, continuous and the horizontal movement of ocean water okay in a, a regular pattern okay and so as this origin to where we have a, 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 a saline water when i say soft water i mean say fresh water okay soft water is a water that contains little or no amount of salt so no amount of salt okay it is soft but not the water that you just i mean fetch from your tap when you open a tap and the water comes that one is not fresh water. A fresh water is a water without salt in it. All right. So we have this current carrying water from one place to the other. And so if the water that it carries is fresh, and then it sends it to a saline water, then it tells you that that fresh water is going to reduce the salinity of the water at its destination. Saline water to a fresh water it means that it is going to increase the salt level of the fresh water that is the basic principle here if we should take this particular explanation into consideration and free surface all right and sub mixing of water reduces salinity whilst enclosed areas experience higher salinity levels of course if we have a free surface that free surface you know we have lots of water around that this ocean current carry the water around from one place to the other and of course this is going to reduce the salinity of the ocean but then if we should have the water in a confined area say in the bay or in the gulf okay or say in the street is that okay when i say street you know it okay uh -huh. or say in a in a a, 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 a particular confined area uh, normally along the coast compared to the free surface water okay good so still on the degree of water mixing by current we are saying for instance in open oceans where there is free mixing okay free mixing of ocean current salinity tends to be lower than average and you know the average ocean salinity is about 35.5 psu or 35.5 uh, parts per thousand grams of ocean water and so we are saying on the other hand in holy or partially enclosed seas such as the dead and the red seas water mixing is minimal hence salinity tends to be high when you take the dead sea okay who takes its feet from the river Jordan, even as I'm about showing you the map indicating or say locating the, uh, the Dead Sea, realize that it is enclosed by land. And so once it is enclosed by land, then, then you can open oceans. 
just as that of the Red Sea is too. You know, the Red Sea, as I showed you, is more or less confined. And then the Mediterranean Sea as well. And so, you agree with me that the salinity level there will be very high as compared to the open oceans. Okay, so location of the Dead Sea. We have another map here to give you an idea of where the Dead Sea is located. And so we have uh, Egypt here in Africa, okay? And then Israel, and there's the Gaza, the Gaza Strip, okay? So Israel is here, we have West Bank here. And this is the river, what? River Jordan, or say the Jordan River. Yeah, the Jordan River, okay? And the whole of this place is Jordan. And so the sea here is what we call what? Land. And so once this one is enclosed by land, it means uh, we will not have this ocean current to carry fresh or say soft water from one place to this place to reduce the salt content. And so you can expect the salt content of the Dead Sea to be that high. And uh, I'm sure once again, as you are watching me in your comfortable zone, okay, <laughs> where the question you'll be asking is that, oh, it says, so why, uh, why the name dead? Does it mean that the, the water is dead? It is called Dead Sea because of the high level of salt, or say the high salt content level, okay, in the sea. And what has this got to do with the name dead? It's, it's the reason because, because of the salt content, some microscopic aquatic organisms, okay, cannot live in the soil. They can survive, okay, like say plants, and some, some, uh, yeah, yeah, some plant species and uh, uh, some fishes. They can't live in this particular sea. That is not to say that we don't have plants at all in there. Of course, we have some few species of plants that do survive there, fishes and plants. And so then the name Dead Sea, dead, meaning dead is not supporting life. Is that okay? Good. Now, let's look at the latitudinal distribution of salinity. So it tells you that for the three factors that we highlighted, we have been able to explain them. And so in our trial questions, if you are asked to state and explain the factors that influence ocean salinity, I believe you'll be able to do that. And so let's look at the latitudinal distribution of salinity, okay? Probably why the ocean uh, sorry, why the Atlantic Ocean is the most saltiest and not say the Pacific Ocean, which is the biggest one. So the polar region. So let's take that of the polar region. or say the poles. Okay. At the poles, salinity is less than 30 parts of salt per thousand grams of water as a result of. So what are the reasons? As a result of one, high precipitation. Okay. High precipitation. In other words, we have more source of what of fresh water and then also we have of ice at the poles don't forget that at the poles temperature is very very low and uh, those living around the poles will attest to the fact that we have snows who are falling or probably as geographers then we may have to buy the air ticket and then go for a sightseeing okay <laughs> all right so the third reason is that low temperatures enhance little or no evaporation. As we established the fact that there is a positive relationship between temperature and evaporation. And so once temperature is low at the poles, then of course, you should expect that evaporation will also be low. So that is also another reason. Then also the presence of numerous large rivers like Mackenzie in the Canadian boreal forest. So Mackenzie is a river, okay? Then the Yukon in North America. Then the Obi in Russia 
and Yenisi, which it is being translated as what? Great River, also in Central Russia. Okay? President Putin's arena. <laughs> all right. So, because of all these uh, large rivers feeding the uh, uh, polar world, the... Now, so, we are done with the uh, Latina distribution when it comes to the poles. Now, let's look at the uh, region between 20 degrees and 30 degrees north and south of the equator. Okay? And then here, the saltiness of the ocean is above 37 per thousand due to the following. So, what are the following reasons? For reason number one, there is a very high rate of evaporation resulting from cloudless skies, high day temperatures, and dry trade wild winds. Is that okay? Good. So, so it tells you that when you are within the 20 degrees and 30 degrees north and south of the equator, the temperature level is high. And once the temperature level is high, then of course evaporation will also be, what? be high. And then the salt content there will be high. Then reason number two, extremely low relative humidity, less than 35 watt percent. Of course, the temperature there is very close, prevents the sun's rays from reaching you on the Earth's surface. But here, we have cloudless skies. And so the temperature is very high, result, also resulting in low humidity level. Okay. Now, oh, it means we are done with that region as well. Let's look at the equatorial region just around the equator. Is that okay? In the equatorial region, salinity is below 35 per thousand because of the following reasons. So reason number one, high annual rainfall. Okay? We have high annual rainfall. High annual rainfall. So this accounts for the salinity level being below 35 parts. Is that okay? 35 parts. Because annually, the amount of rainfall received is very what, high. Then we have little evaporation due to plenty what, plenty clouds. Is that okay? Good. Let's see whether we have more reasons. Okay. We have the third reason being the Macon Vota. So, you know, the, once you hear of Vota, then Ghana comes to mind. So, Vota and Zai, which empty their waters into the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Is that okay? Good. So, I think this one is clear. Let's see if we have more. Re oh, here we come to the trial questions, which uh, mean that we are almost done. Okay, so these are our trial questions. Trial question number one, what is ocean salinity? And I believe you can what? Define. Is that okay? The amount of salt content in the ocean. Or say the concentration of salt in the ocean waters. Then explain the factors influencing ocean salinity. We just talked about some of them. Now temperature is one. The addition of fresh water to the ocean. Is that okay? And then many other factors that we talked about. All right. And I believe you will be able to do that. Oh, I thank you. I thank you. I am done. So once again, I am your facilitator, Bogasam. And we shall meet some other time. Let me check out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.